Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Train Duke here, back with another video. And today we got a highly requested video from you guys. We had a couple people reach out in the comments, even over on Instagram, you know, talking about nipping, right? It's an aggravating habit, uh, you know, something that you guys should not tolerate, right? And you don't wanna have to deal with that with your pup and especially your dog when they get as big as Duke, right? You don't need them uh, chewing on your clothes or, or uh, your hands or whatever the case may be, right? That's not fun for anybody. So what we want to do here is, you know, give you guys some insight, uh, educate you as to why they do it and uh, ways that you can prevent that, hopefully in the early stages, so you don't have that issue. So my hands here, you know, Duke's not trying to, you know, eat it. So if it's your first time here, guys, uh, please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of helpful, helpful videos about uh, Connie Corso ownership and all that good stuff if you're returning you know member of the jewel team i appreciate you guys so much continue to support the videos like the video and uh let's get into it guys all right guys so the first thing you need to have a good understanding of is the reason why they're nipping or you know the reason why they're you know they might be fighting on everything and uh you know you got a new pup and you got to understand that you know this is how they're you know learning and experiencing the world right for the first time and uh, a lot of stuff they don't know and, uh, and you know, it's on you to mold them and teach them. But they're in those early stages, they're going to be, you know, nipping at things, chewing on things. And that's how they get a good understanding of, you know, what's what and just their exposure to the world. So knowing that, you know, it kind of helps out with you getting frustrated. Not saying you won't, you know, get upset if they nip you or they, you know, they, they put a nick in your, you know, your nice fresh clothes or whatever it is that you got. You know, I know that stuff can be frustrating, but it's things that you can do to, uh, you know, combat that and keep your frustration levels down so you can focus on, you know, teaching and training your pup so you don't have to, you know, sit, be sitting here, you know, trying to love on him, but he's he's wandering off and he's like gnawing on your arm and stuff because that can, nobody likes that, right? So that's just one of the first, the first key point that I want you guys to understand is that, look, you know, they're young, they're, you know, exploring the world and they do it through their mouths. So um, don't get too frustrated about that. But now that you guys, you know, know that, have an understanding of that, let's move on to the next point. All right, guys, the point I wanna discuss with you guys here is bite inhibition, right? You can do some training centered around bite inhibition to make sure that, you know, your pup understands, you know, the damage or the effect that they're, they're causing with their mouth, okay? Uh, a lot of times, uh, they learn it in the early ages by, you know, being with their litter mates. And that's why it's, it's not good to, you know, pull them away from, from the litter too early, right? They say that sweet spot is, you know, the eight week mark, everybody pups go, goes home or pick up or whatever. But during that time they're with their, their litter mates, you know, they're starting to explore more. They're getting around and they're playing, you know, they're clawing and nipping at each other. But when they start that nipping, you know, one catches in the ear or whatever the case may be they start letting out those whelps you know giving them or causing you know giving them or receiving them and uh they start to understand like okay okay that hurts that hurts or whatever the case may be you know and there's some techniques too where people you know they get their pup and maybe they nip them and they'll you know they'll mimic the whelp to get them to understand you know that's a technique and it you know i i didn't necessarily do that much with duke but i know people who have done that like I was saying, guys, you know, I didn't do too much of the mimicking of the welt with Duke, um, maybe a couple of times, but, um, you know, some people have done it and it's been a technique that's, you know, proven to, to have worked for them. So that's you know, something that you guys can try. You can put it in your toolkit and uh, try to employ that. You know, if they go out, they nip at you, they bite or something like that, and, you know, you mimic that welt that, you know, one of the litter mates would have possibly given off in that situation or just kind of jerk that, you know, let them know that it, you know, it it hurt for the most part, right? And, uh, you know, to try to train them to say, okay, they cause some some pain there and they, you know, they should disassociate from that uh, behavior, right? You're not rewarding that behavior or anything like that. Uh, I highlighted training at the beginning of this section and, uh, you know, bite inhibition training is something you can do, right? When you get in that situation where, you know, they're nipping or they're biting or whatever the case may be, right and you're you know maybe you were playing a game or doing a training session right check it all fun stops right they'll start to understand like okay we were having a good time we were playing you know i nipped that dad i nipped that mom and then next thing you know the toy went away the attention went away the praise the love went away how do i get that back okay i don't bite i don't nip and you know over time 
through consistency and effort on your part, uh, they'll start to understand that. So um, another thing too is just like, you know, getting them to understand to be gentle with their, you know, when you're feeding, you know, hand feed them some, you know, some of their food or whatever. But, you know, you know, if you got to feed it through two fingers or whatever the case may be, uh, to let them know easy, easy, right? So they're not just taking these big, you know, whatever, when they're trying to get the treat or the food or a toy or whatever the case may be. But it's just constant training to let them know like, hey, you know, if I'm dealing up around the hands or whatever, uh, with my, anything with my mouth and, and, you know, mom, dad, anybody in the house or whatever, I, I need to be gentle. So they'll start to understand that. So do some research, guys. Look up bite inhibition, bite inhibition training. Get a better understanding uh, more than what I explained here because uh, the more educated you are on the subject, the better, right? So I just wanted to highlight that uh, and we can go ahead and move into the next point. All right, guys, so moving on to the next point, right? If you don't want your pup or your dog chewing on you, right, you need to have something that's appropriate for them to chew on. Okay, what I mean by that is make sure that you take your time and you invest in, you know, a good quality chew toy that they can use, right? Uh, I don't recommend you just give them the toy and let them go at it, right? Because especially, you know, if you got a Connie Corso, you know, they'll tear it up, right? And they'll start, you know, chewing on stuff and ingesting it. You don't want that, especially with your young pup. But you do want something that's durable, right? That's gonna last for a while, right? Before they can, you know, tear it down or whatever the case may be. And that's gonna be pivotal in, you know, your success of stopping the nipping, right? So as we move on to talk about, you know, corrections and, you know, redirecting, uh, you know, their, their nipping, uh, that's, you're gonna need something that they can uh, chew on, right? So if, they, if you catch them in the act of like, you know, we're sitting here and they start going for your hand or something like that, you know, you don't want to, uh... <laughs> okay, he wants to sit in my lap. Come on, dude. All right, good boy. All right, guys, we're back. So like I was saying before, if you're sitting there and they start to, you know, nip at your hands or go to gnaw on your, your hands or your arm or something like that, you wanna make sure that you, you know, mark that behavior with a strong, with a stern no. You know, I've always used, uh, you know, no as my consistent negative marking for, you know, unwanted behavior, all right? And then you wanna make sure that you, you know, redirect them to, you know, something that they, you approve or something that's more appropriate that they can chew on, you know, like they're, they're uh, they maybe got a Benny bone or a strong, you know, chew toy or whatever it is that you have, you know, re redirect them to that. And then once they start to engage or bite on that, you know, you mark that with a yes, you know, good boy, praise, love, or whatever. And the more that you do that and you're consistent over time, you know, it'll really help you out as far as them starting to understand like, okay, I'm not supposed to be chewing on mom or dad's hand. I'm, I'm supposed to be chewing on, you know, this toy that they went and got for me. So as long as you guys understand that and you're consistent with your, uh, your corrections and your redirections and your marking language, you know, your pup will start to pick up on that and you, you should be pretty successful you know, during them, those endeavors. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the next thing. All right, guys, the next point I want to bring up is something that I think is appropriate for every discussion, you know, uh, dealing with a Conte Corso, and that's, uh, you know, socialization. You know, it is vital that you continue to uh, socialize your pup throughout their life, right? Um, and even, you know, when you initially get them, you want to, you're in that sweet zone, you know, seven to 12 weeks or whatever, you're trying to do as much as you can, expose them to as much as you can. But, uh, you know, get them out there, get them used to certain things uh, in the area or wherever you're going to be, especially your your day to day um, living encounters and stuff that they're, you know, highly likely to, to engage and encounter. So they have a good baseline of normal. Right. And then when you're in those environments, you could use the same, you know, correct and redirect uh, drills uh, out in public, you know, bring a toy or whatever. You guys are just, you know, sitting out maybe close to a park or something like that and uh, you know, kids are playing over there, but you got your pup or your dog over there and you guys are doing your own thing, you know? You start doing something not supposed to do, chewing on something not supposed to be chewing on, you know, you know, mark that with a no, redirect them to uh, you know, the more appropriate behavior, right? You know, it's never a bad time to, t to discuss uh, socialization when you're talking about these, uh, these big old dogs here, so. Uh, just I'm gonna keep that one short and sweet. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. Thing. All right, guys, the next point I wanna discuss is consistent training, all right? Uh, that is something that's near and dear to my heart. You know, I'm really big on training to make sure you're involved with your pup, make sure you guys are constantly doing something. It could be something as short as two to five minutes or, or whatever, you know, time you have allotted throughout the day to do a drill, train, train with your pup, 
you know, I think that stuff goes a long way. But the reason he's, oh, you're gonna tell the story? All right, go ahead, dude. All right. <laughs> Let's reframe here. All right, guys, we're back. So the reason I bring up, uh, you know, training and making sure you're being consistent is because, you know, it's important, it goes a long way, right? Uh, and something I wanna highlight here is, uh, everybody in your household needs to be you know on the same page especially in those days where you're you're dealing with puppy nipping and uh you want to make sure that everybody understands what's going on so, you know they could maybe watch this video and get a good understanding but they need to deal with uh, the situation appropriately okay so you can't be handling it one way where you're correcting you're redirecting you're marking and it's you know you're doing your thing and then maybe you know your significant other or, or one of your children or somebody who lives in the house coming you know have an encounter with nipping or, or biting and they just handle it completely different right and possibly you know possibly in a, a very negative way right reaction because nobody likes to get nipped uh, nobody likes to get bit or whatever the case may be but if you guys come together and say look this is what's going on this is the behavior this is how you correct it you know, you guys get on the same sheet of music, it'll be a lot easier for your pup to start to grasp, say, all right, this is what's going on. I'm starting to understand. These dogs, Connie Corsos are extremely intelligent, right? It doesn't take them long to pick up on it, right? And it's, you know, they're stubborn. So, you know, right, it may take a little bit or some, you know, some extra effort or a lot of patience, but they're gonna catch on, right? And they'll start to understand, oh, no, I'm not supposed to be chewing on that. And I promise if you guys be consistent with your training, come together, you know, it'll all jive and you guys will be happy with your, uh, with your pup, especially as they, they grow older, right? And those teeth start, they lose those, those razor sharp baby teeth and those hard ones come in, right? So just be consistent with your training. And um, no, that's all I got on that point. And then the next point, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, guys, next point I wanna discuss here is something that's very important, right? You may find yourself in a situation where you're just, you're outmatched, you know, and you're having a hard time. And I'm here to tell you guys, look, it's okay to bring in professional help, right? Uh, it's well worth the investment, right? You take your time, do your due diligence and find somebody in your area that can really help you out with your situation that they could further explain to you, hey, look, this is what's going on. This is the type of behavior. Here's how you can, you know, correct it or, you know, be there to advise you, you know, up close and personal about how you can deal with the situation that you're having, right? As I'm discussing here, I'm just giving a broad, you know, overview of what's going on. But, you know, if you get somebody who really knows what they're uh, talking about uh, that can work with you close to close, you know, maybe a couple times a week or at least once a week, uh, that could really help you out, right? And it's, it's something that you you have to be willing to make the investment, right? You've already come this far, you got this, your Connie Corso, they're not cheap or whatever the case may be. So you already invested in this dog and uh, you wanna make sure that, you know, you, you raise them up and you teach them the right way and that everybody's living comfortable in the house, right? You don't wanna have, you know, a dog that's, you know, running around, terrorizing everything, chewing on stuff he's not supposed to. Uh, and they're gonna get big and the bigger they get, the more, you know, damage or destruction they can cause so you want to make sure that you're able to you know handle that and you know it's you know put the ego aside or whatever the case may be if you need to go you know get somebody to come in and help you do exactly that like i said before be diligent and you know searching for somebody you know preferably somebody who has some experience with the county course so they, they're familiar with the breed you know that stuff can really go a long way there's no shame in that you know, it's all about getting somebody in there to make sure they can properly educate you so you can go forward and continue to train and teach your dog, right? Because we want good, healthy environments, good, healthy dogs, uh, and we want the Connie Corso breed to still remain uh, with their high reputation, uh, <laughs> reputation intact. So uh, don't, be, don't be ashamed of that. Don't be afraid to do that. And uh, remember guys, if you need professional help, seek it. All right, let's move on. All right, guys, I hope that information was helpful for you guys. If you know, if you need to, you know, rewind back or go, you know, watch the video again uh, to kind of hone in on to some of the stuff that I was saying, please feel free to do that. Uh, like I said, guys, just be consistent. Uh, make sure you educate yourself. Get help if you need help. It's going to go a long way. I want you guys to be set up for success. I don't want you to fail. I don't want your pup to fail. Uh, and I want you guys to have a great experience with your Connie Corso, right? So if we could get there to the point where we could stop the nipping, stop the biting. Uh, I promise you, you have a much more pleasurable experience with your dog. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, guys, please subscribe, hit the like button for everybody, right? That really helps us out 
pushes us out in the algorithm. Um, comment on the video, guys, if you have some extra advice to add to this video, right? If you're here, you're watching this video, guess what? You're a member of the Drool team. Uh, we appreciate you guys. So let's continue to educate everybody that's here uh, and you know, give some good information down in the comment section. That stuff goes a long way. You know, I read the comments uh, and a lot of other people read the comments too. So if you got some advice uh, for people, you know, point them to you know, another resource or whatever it may be, you know, put that down in the comment box, guys, and uh, you know, share, the, share the knowledge so we all can have uh, uh, be better educated uh, Connie Corso owners. So until next time, guys, check out the video I got up on screen right now, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.